Uh, kia ora koutou, Linda Bowden, Suicide Prevention Coordinator for Counties Monaco. Um, and so we're going to go along with mood and eating disorders right into youth suicide, so speed date number three. Um, so I guess you all know, or the role of GP and in primary care, <clears throat> that adolescents are unique, the way they present, the way that we make them feel is probably the key around getting them to talk about anything in relation to suicide. Um, so I guess the first, the first key message for me that I really want to leave you with is ask, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, and I'm going to show you a video after that. So just following on from my two colleagues here, what, what are we looking and listening for is really about key changes. So changes in behaviour, uh, withdrawing from friends and family, not doing things that they used to do, if they were a frequent show up at the family dinner table on Sundays and that's changed, then we need to start asking. So. Uh, pulling out of the things they used to do, behaving reckless, recklessly and dangerously, um, changes with relationships or being bullied. We do need to take the bullying seriously. Uh, any, any talk or conversations about self-harm, getting access to things that could help them take their life is a key one, and picking up on about medication. Don't forget when you're seeing young people in primary care that it's not just about whether they are taking medication, but also if there is medication in the house. Um, so being mindful of our parents. Increased use of alcohol or drugs, and suicide notes. Um, the physical changes, so um, take note of people, young people saying that they're running out of energy, they're feeling really fatigued and tired, um, too much sleeping, not enough sleeping, and the same with the weight, so too little weight gain or too much weight gain, um, including in that headaches and sore stomachs. Changes in thinking, uh, an interest in death and suicidal themes that can be really challenging to assess in primary care given the influence of social media and how young people might present, but still worth taking note. Poor concentration, inability to make decisions, low self-esteem. I mean, again, you guys probably know a lot of this. So I'm going to whiz through this to get to the video for you. Uh, inappropriate. Um, talk about guilt and what that might mean. Changes in mood, as David started with, you know, if there's an increase or a change, particularly around irrit irritability, um, anger, rage, uh, talking about depression or crying a lot, um, mood swings, which is always a hard one in teenagers, um, and feelings of anxiety. So our risk factors, again, I'm sure you've all read everything that tells you this, but our previous suicide attempt, um, thoughts of suicide, a plan, uh, and a family history of suicide or that they've lost someone known to them recently. So that's really important in primary care, uh, particularly for our young people. So if they are talking about the loss of a friend, it's really important to clarify when, how close were they to you. Is it a Facebook friend or somebody you actually have met in life that you saw regularly, that you hung out with, that were really important to you? Um, and being mindful of that post, you know, losing somebody six months to 12 months after the death. Um, the key thing about risk, which is hard in primary care, is that always that notion of we need to risk assess, risk assess, risk assess. High risk and low risk doesn't necessarily have a change in terms of predicting suicide. So young people particularly, who may we typically categorise as low risk, are still just as much as likely to die by suicide as those that we categorise as high risk. So just being careful about, it's not so much about the categorisation of risk, it's about what we're going to do. The protective factors, again, you probably all know this, feeling connected, a strong sense of connection is really important for young people, secure cultural identity, spirituality, a supportive family, problem solving skills, access to support and help. Having one person is a key note there, one person that they can talk to or that they can identify as a, as a um, source of support. Self-esteem and a sense of belonging and meaningful contribution. So um, young people actually really like the opportunity to help others or to be able to give back to other people. So our key questions, and I'm sure again you're familiar with all of these, um, how are you coping with what's been happening in your life? Do you ever feel like giving up? Are you thinking about dying? Are you thinking about hurting yourself? But actually asking, are you thinking about suicide? Have you thought about how you would do it? Um, and do you have the means to do it? So I think the key things there are making sure for, for our primary care practitioners is that once we get that information or when we are asking, um, that we are clear about how we might set a community of care. So for some people, that's the conversation. Don't let our young people leave not knowing where to go next. Whether that's a referral on or whether it's you need to come and see me tomorrow, the key thing in your 10 to 15 minute appointment is also checking for information. So making sure that if you're getting an inkling, we need to do some questions here. 
offer that young person the space to talk to you by themselves. If you feel that that's a concern, you're not breaking any privacy code around being able to ask them, create that safe space. The key resources up here for you, I'm sure you already know. So 1737, giving young people that free text number. Um, Levar have an amazing website for suicide prevention, predominantly with a Pacific focus as well, for those of you seeing our Pacific whānau. The Mental Health Foundation, this beauty in this red box here, key free downloadable coping plan, and you could do that with the young person in about two minutes. It's really easy to read and understand for young people. Sparks, as David said, another great thing. The other awesome app here, Auntie D, if we could get every young person in New Zealand to put this on their phone, that would be amazing. So one of the key things, particularly around when people are experiencing suicidal thoughts, is problem solving. Um, Auntie D is a free, downloadable, problem-solving CBT-based app for young people. Um, so if you can get them to put that on their phones, that would be amazing. Um, and of course, you'll have your health pathways around. There's a youth suicide prevention one and an adult one, and obviously the lowdown, um, as David said. So that's, for me, I think that's pretty speedy, Christine, and the good books. I have my ups and downs, just like anybody else. Maybe more than anybody else. I can be hard to figure out. And I like my privacy. I don't want you checking up on me all the time. But you know your family better than anybody else. So if you think they're acting different... Acting really down, crying all the time for no good reason... Or getting really mad. Not able to sleep, or sleeping too much. Shutting their friends out, giving their stuff away. Acting reckless, drinking, using drugs, staying out late. Suddenly not doing the stuff they used to love. Or doing things that is just not like them. It may be nothing to worry about. It may be just high school. Or it may be something more. They may be depressed. Not just feeling down, but really, really sad. It might be that your kid is thinking about killing themselves. It happens. More than you think. More than it should. And people say, I had no idea. I thought it was just a phase they were going through. I never thought she'd do it. I wish he had come to me. I wish he had said something. I wish I had said something. Even if I say I'm okay, or say I'm okay. Ask anyway. Don't give up on me. I may be really good at hiding my feelings. I don't want to make a big deal. If you think your kids are acting different, or if they seem like a different person, say something. Say, what's up? Let's talk about it. Don't shame me by asking in front of others. Give me a chance to find the words. Let me calm down. Give me a chance to gather my thoughts. Be straight up and ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. In fact, it helps. When people are thinking about suicide, they want somebody to ask. They want somebody to care. Maybe you think you'll make it worse if you ask. Like you're putting the idea in their head. Believe me, it doesn't work that way. In fact, the best way to keep teenagers safe is to ask. Are you thinking about killing yourself? And what if they say yes? Or maybe. Or sometimes. Well, here's what you don't say. Don't be selfish. Don't be so dramatic. Get over it. That boy's not worth killing yourself over. Go on then, do it. You just want attention. If you don't do it, I'll do it for you. Are you trying to bring shame to the family? What you do is listen and then say, I'm sorry you're feeling so bad. How can I help? We'll get through this together. Let's keep you safe. A lot of people think about suicide. Most won't try, but some will. If you hear someone say things like, I'd be better off dead. Life's too hard now. Take them seriously. Find someone they can talk to about it. Someone who knows how to help. Sometimes kids want to kill themselves because something has happened. A breakup, bullying, or failure to meet expectations. But sometimes it goes deeper and it's not going to go away by itself. Get some help. Talk to someone you trust. Try the helplines or websites for more information. Or your church leaders or school counsellors. Don't just let it drop. Make sure your kid always has someone to talk to. Someone they trust. Make a list together. Right there. Three, four, five names of support people. Put the suicide helpline number on there too. Make sure they keep it on them. Make sure your home is safe. Lock away pills. Get rid of weapons or anything they may use to hurt themselves with. And one more thing. Don't leave them alone. If you feel you can't keep them safe, call 111. If your loved one tells you they want to end their life, be brave. Be calm and breathe. Reassure them. Allow them to talk. 
Validate their feelings. Ensure their safety. No matter how small their problem seems to you, it's a big deal to them. It never hurts to ask. And it can make a big difference. Or the difference. In your kid's life. So I just wanted to leave you with that message because the brave message is probably the most helpful one. So setting up that safe conversation, that space, the window of opportunity for young people is often with primary care. Um, so making sure that they're comfortable in asking the question is the key. Namahinui. <laughs>